Hello, welcome. Welcome to the six pillars of grief and growth after losing a baby. I am Julia. If you are watching the replay, type replay. You can jump probably um, you can jump probably five minutes ahead um, because we are um, still five minutes before four and I'm just waiting for people to slowly jump on to get notified and I think I'm just realizing that I actually have not started the live video on Instagram. So, start. Start, start, start. Um, okay. We're telling your followers that you started a live video. Thank you, Instagram. Welcome. If you are watching the replay, type hashtag replay in the comments. If you're watching live, type hashtag live. Um, and we are still a few minutes before the event, so I'm just waiting for people to jump on live. If you're watching the replay, you can skip ahead for at least three minutes um, and see how we go there. And um, yeah, I'm live today because it is my son Zeman's sixth birthday, or it would be. It's his heavenly birthday. Sorry, I just disappeared. Got this little figure here. Um, I also have put on a candle for him, for all the other angel babies. So I can honor them. <sighs> and yeah, like I said, I'm just waiting a little bit for people to jump online live. I hope I see. Hey Danica. I am so glad you could make it. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I am just waiting until four, which is two minutes from now. Um, before we really start with the event to see if people are coming online. Um, I'm also online on Facebook, so I'm just having a look here on the screen every now and then, see if there is some, there is something happening. How are you? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I am, I'm so glad that, that you're here and I'm really looking forward to um, today, <laughs> I am, today I'm feeling a little bit better, um, I, just a week ago, I got the first symptoms of, um, COVID, and, um, last Friday, holy moly, um, was really, really extreme, I was lying in bed, not feeling well at all, headaches, everything was hurting, I, I just didn't know what to do with myself. So, um, yeah, the last week was completely different from um, from what I expected, but um, I guess we all know how that is, like life is not, not exactly how we expected. Um, we all had different plans, so yeah, COVID is just a small little thing in, in my world. Um, but yeah, the last week was a little bit different. I had planned to um, prepare differently for today, um, but 
I didn't make it anyways. I sent sent out a workbook this morning. Um, let me know if you got the workbook if you had signed up, and um, if not, you can still go online or uh, at graveandgrow.space and then click on the six pillars of healing and growth after baby loss and um, you can register so it sends you to Teachable. Teachable asks you to sign up um, for free of course and in there um, is the workbook. So for those of you who signed up, could you, um, did you download the workbook? Were you able to get it? Did you get the email? And well, in general, it's for for now. So thank you so much for being here. Um, <laughs> Taco Bella, you've got it. Yes, yes. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah. Every now and then, I'm looking over here um, because that's where my my screen is from my laptop. Um, I'm online on. Um, live on Facebook too, so we can bring in the whole community, all the moms who have lost their baby or babies. So if you're here with me, um, maybe type a hashtag hello um, and yeah for those of you who who don't know me, I am Julia. I am an angel mom. I have lost my son, Simon. He was born um, exactly six years ago. He was born in the 26th pregnancy week and um, he, well at first everything seemed fine. Um, he seemed really strong for his age. Um, and five days later he died in my arms because there were complications. Um, he was not ready. Um, his body was physically not able to survive um, despite being on life support. But um, yeah, every day another organ um, gave up. He needed surgery after surgery after surgery. And um, on Day 5, 15th of February, February 2016, um, me and uh, my partner at that time, Simon's dad, we decided that we'll turn off the life support. It was not an easy decision, it was in the middle of the night um, and we had a conversation about it before because the doctors already like said, okay, we need to talk about this possibility. And um, we didn't come to an agreement before we went to bed and the doctors woke us up. We were in the hospital. I was still recovering um, from my C-section from birth, from surgery. And um, Zima was in neonatal care. And the doctors came in the middle of the night and said, okay, you have to make a decision now. Um, so I felt like Zima was making a decision for me and that gave me the strength at that moment or the clarity. I did not feel strong, certainly not, um, but it gave me, the, gave me the clarity about what to do and I think we all form our own beliefs. So it is different for everyone um, and well since then I went on a healing and growth journey and of course there was a lot of pain and hurt and anger and sadness and tears and um, I I definitely um, am clear that I forever ever love Simon like he's part of part of me part of my life 
and um, after a while I decided, I think two years in, I decided um, to become a coach for other women who have lost a baby because I felt that coaching gave me an extreme, extremely helpful tool after losing Zimon, like it was what made the whole difference. I had therapy, I had counseling and that all, it all helped um, and I'm really grateful for it. <clears throat> um, but I also felt that there was a limit and I was functioning, I was back in life and um, I still felt like hollow inside and coaching coaching made, made the difference to me. Like, and that is what I want to share. Also, when I lost Simon, I was looking for professionals that had experienced what I experienced. Um, because I felt that the support um, I got was great. But I often felt like, okay, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, you really have no idea what it is to lose a baby, to have this dream about the future life together, and to not even get to know the person. Like, not having, have a, not even having a first birthday. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to, um, I wanted to find someone who has experienced baby loss, who can support me professional, and I did not. And that was my intention to actually um, start learning more about how I can not only support myself, but others. Um, but yeah, it's not why we're here today. I want to share with you something else. I want to share with you the six pillars that I learned. So. Um, six pillars of healing and growth that were um, supporting me through the time that I think are the most most important pieces um, in no certain order that helped me heal, helped me to um, be able to enjoy life again um, and uh, before we start with that I quickly will plug in my laptop because I forgot that. And it would be a shame if we lose connection. Um, so bear with me, have a look at my beautiful, beautiful table. I'm living in Argentina um, at the moment in my husband's mother's house, which is a little bit older um, and has a beautiful wallpaper. Okay, I'm still here. Go away. Excuse me. Okay, so today is not about me, it is about all of us, all our angels and about healing. So, um, pillar one of, um, pillar one of healing and growth after baby loss is, um, is acknowledging our babies, acknowledging our loss, um, acknowledging what we're missing, what we never got. And, um, for that, part of this healing journey today, I want to invite you to um, share your baby's name and when they were born or when they were supposed to be born, whatever is important to you right now. I would like you to comment, um, share that with me. Even if you're watching the replay, replay right now, um, your baby will be acknowledged. So and even if we have talked about it, it's just about um, 
about knowing that there is always space to acknowledge our babies, to share them with others, and um, yeah, um, type type in the comments um, whatever you want to share right now, whatever feels good for you, and I'll give some space for that before I continue. I'm going to have a sip of water, maybe you hear that my voice still is a little bit scratchy. Emma. Emma is such a beautiful name. I'm not even sure if I pronounce it properly right now because um, I think I pronounce it quite German, like I would pronounce Simon, with Simon which in English is Simon. Thank you so much for sharing that. And then almost a year, and that is, you know, such a short time, such a long time, the first year. So many firsts. Thomas. Mm. He died 83 minutes after birth, lived 40 weeks in two days. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing Thomas and Emma with us. I'm really grateful that we're here together right now, that I'm not alone on my special day, but also that I have the chance to share the chance to share what I learned. So while you're still typing, I want to share with you the six pillars. One is your baby, acknowledging your baby. Birdie. Hmm. Yes. Birdie is a beautiful name. Thank you. Isaiah, born still 39 weeks and 4 days. And Faith. Yeah, I am really, really sorry, guys, for all of you going through this experience. It is something that we definitely are not prepared for. Like no one, no one can prepare you for that. And I'm really glad too that I did not spend my whole pregnancy worrying about that happening. Nineteen weeks, yeah. Yeah. So the six pillars are the parenting part, um, thoughts, emotions and triggers. And when I say thoughts, emotions and triggers, um, it means learning how to deal and cope with our thoughts, emotions, with our triggers. I remember that after losing Zimon, there were a lot of things that triggered me um, that I found limited me in their triggers. So there were triggers that that I liked to accept and that I still. Um, still feel like of course it triggers me to 
go to a grief group and listen to other moms who have lost their baby and yeah I'm feeling I'm, I'm deeply feeling the loss and the pain and and everything they're going through and that is a trigger that I just don't want to release like it is part of me being human and then there are triggers that I felt are limiting um, I did not want to feel sad or angry or um, or fall apart when a friend of mine tells me that they're pregnant or when I see a baby or when I see a pregnant woman like yes it happened but I did not want that so I wanted to learn how to um, how to deal with those triggers how to deal with my emotions and how to not fall apart all the time I see a pregnant woman all the time I see a baby and um, that was one one really big <laughs> really big pillar in my healing and growth being able to learn that it helped me of course dealing also with other triggers with other thoughts emotions um, and um, other things that I I slowly got control over so I could enjoy life again so I would not be needing to hide my emotions so it's not about okay yeah I see this pregnant woman and uh, I'm hiding my tears and I'm gonna pretend I'm strong and it's not um, it's not triggering me it's not a problem for me it was about really healing those triggers and being okay with pregnant woman being okay um, with and um, I acknowledge that a lot actually when talking to my clients I'm living here um, in Argentina and it's really close so there are a lot of people around and um, the neighbors have a small child and the child cries and laughs and bubbles and I'm not sure if you really heard it right now in the background but um, I want you to know that I'm aware of it I'm really really sorry if it is triggering for you right now I am not triggered by it anymore and I'm really really glad that I can just live my life without being all the time on the edge or um, so before we move on to the other triggers, I want uh, to the other pillars. I want to share with you um, a technique that I talk about a lot in my posts, and I think I have never made a video about it, which is the emotional freedom technique. And I would like you to stick with me, play with me, and try it out. Um, you can find a guide, a really, really short one in the workbook about how it works. So you can review afterwards. You can also take notes on how to do it. But um, the emotional freedom technique, it's nothing that is limited to practitioners. Um, I find it always helpful to work with someone um, because they can help you to see your blind spots or they can help you find different words. Um, but you can practice that alone on your own, like for effect. That's what I did, um, and that's what helped me so much in uh, sitting on the floor in the bathroom moments, sobbing, um, and and feeling like I'm exploding from from the inside um, because I was so sad, so angry so frustrated um, so emotional freedom technique really 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 helped me a lot and I want to guide you through it um, today so you can use that for yourself so what is emotional freedom technique and I'm, I'm holding this cup the whole time because I wanted to drink something so
halo on us always. Welcome. If you are jumping in later, um, I would love if you want to say hi and um, share a little bit about yourself and especially about your baby, your baby's your experience. Um, if you're not feeling like sharing, I can totally respect that too. Sometimes, uh, sometimes Facebook, Instagram is just not the right place, so that's okay. Um, so yeah, emotional freedom technique is a technique um, that is close to acupuncture. So you're using meridian points in your body, which I will show you where they are, um, to release emotions that are stuck and that can't get out. So like I said, for me, bathroom on the floor moments, bathroom on the floor, well, crying in the bathroom on the floor moments, um, really strong emotions, that's been my number one release. Of course, screaming, hitting something, or, um, or just sobbing without stopping. Stopping helps too, but um, yeah, emotional freedom technique is a really, really powerful. Um, like I said, if you have the workbook, there is a an, um, an small instruction in there, but you find everything online for free too. So what we're doing is we're tapping points on our body. The first one is here, that's the karate shop point. Um, while saying a catchphrase which starts with even though and then you add on your feeling or your problem but you need to acknowledge what is in yourself not what is happening on the outside because you can't change what's happening on the outside but you can change the way you feel so what is one strong emotion, or what is one emotion you feel since you lost your baby? If you share that with me here, we can talk about that emotion while I show you how this works. The points, um, so if you type that in the comments, that would be amazing. If not, I'm going to make something up from my life. And maybe if you give me a little bit of an explanation when you feel it, or what's happening. Um, so the points are here, which is when you say the catchphrase, even though I have this problem. And then you say um, something to release it. My sentence is, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And if that feels like a lie for you then you can change it in a way that feels true for you you could say although I have this problem I learn to deeply and completely love and accept myself okay um, the points that you tap are on the top of your head the correct shot point on the top of your head between your um, eyebrows they're called, outside of your eyes, under your eyes, under your nose, on your shin, and here on your collarbone, and your ribs. And um, if you're alone right now, or if you're comfortable enough to do it while you're sitting with your family, your partner, um, I would ask you to join me for one round and um, I'm just gonna make up an emotion from my own experience yeah in a situation where I would use it so let's say I am getting triggered because I'm seeing another baby or I hear another baby crying Okay, 
So I'm getting triggered because I hear another baby trying, crying. It's on the outside. The emotion I'm feeling is sad. I'm just feeling sad and angry at the same time, basically. Yeah. Um, because I see this, I hear this other baby crying. And that's my catchphrase. So I'm tapping on the karate shop point and say, even though I am feeling sad and angry because just seeing this other baby and it's crying, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I repeat this three times. Even though I'm feeling sad and angry, and you can say it all like, while you're crying. Um, even though I'm feeling sad and angry, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I'm feeling sad and angry, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And now you can move to the top of your head. You acknowledge this feeling. Feeling sad and angry. You can tell everyone a little bit, <laughs> yourself a little bit about that feeling. <sighs> it is hard to breathe. Tears are just running down my face. My throat is getting really, really tight. I can barely talk. I'm getting really hot in my whole body. I can feel it on my chest. So you're moving through all the points. It is really, really strong. I want to get rid of it. I allow it. I'm so sad and angry. I'm really triggered. And then you can use also those points on the outside of your arm and on the inside of your arm to move more through your body, more emotion. You can take a deep breath in and out and see how that affects your body. Does that, how did that feel for you right now? Let me know. Maybe silly, maybe you didn't even try, which is okay. Um, maybe you need the replay. In the second round, you can do that until your feeling is completely away. Sometimes your feeling gets stronger in between, which is completely okay. So one important thing about this is knowing that everything is allowed. There is nothing you can do wrong. Like sometimes when we use the words and say like we can go on on that and, and tell a little, talk a little bit more about what's going on in our head. I'm so sad and angry because yeah um, Lorna Zaurus, I'm not sure if I pronounced that wrong, I'm really sorry if I if I don't. Um, I often use it in a triggering moment and that is really really helpful for me. Um, if you are working with a practitioner they actually they actually don't use it, you, know, you actually don't use it in a trigger moment and you can um, imagine yourself being in that moment and just feeling it a little weak, um, like the um, weaker version of that trigger and you can work through it um, and then when the trigger comes up it actually already got weaker and released a little bit more before um, before it actually happened. So it is a really really cool tool that um, I I invite you to try. Like I can't force you, and 
I'm, I'm sure it's not for everyone either. Like, I know people who say, like, yeah, no, emotional freedom technique, not for me. Um, yeah, it's too long, too silly, too whatever. Um, <clears throat> which is okay. Like, I, mean, I, I know people who swear on it, who use it every day. Um, there is something, <laughs> like, um, I, I recommend that my clients, if we have a certain trigger that we can work on, work on, it's toilet tapping. So every time you sit on the toilet, you do one round. Um, it has nothing to do with what you do on the toilet. And I can see, I hope this is not... Sorry, my, my screen is standing. Um, so yeah, it, uh, the the toilet is just a connection. So you build a new habit. You have a reminder to do it all the time when you are there. So you have that time sitting there anyways, and then you go work through it every day, um, and then that helps you to weaken the trigger, weaken the way it is um, affecting you. So really, really um, helpful for me, for my clients, and I, I just say you don't have anything to lose if you try it. Okay, wow, wow, 4.30 already, okay, so we got two pillars, one, sharing about your baby, your experience, yeah, not pushing it away, having a space to talk about it, having a space to acknowledge, um, really important in healing and growth after baby loss. Learning how to cope with your thoughts, emotions and your triggers, we were talking about one tool of many, which is the emotional freedom technique. Um, other tools you can use, you can find them online. I also teach them in my program. Um, but you find everything for free online. You just um, need to piece it together a little bit. That's what I did in the last six years. So um, another, another technique is meditation, mindfulness meditation, breath work, being able to sit with your emotions. Um, and learning that no matter how strong they are, they are actually safe. You are not in that moment anymore. You can breathe through them. You feel them really strong. They might be really, really painful. I know that. Like, and there is actually something like a um, heartbreak syndrome where your heart it physically aches. So I'm not saying that it is easy, I'm not saying that, hey, yeah, you just need to sit with your emotions, say, cool, and then everything will be better. The thing is, with that, is that your emotions might not even get better. You might still be sad, you might still be angry, you might still feel the pain. You just learn how to hold it and you're not constantly fighting and yes over time that will make it easier because what you can feel actually can heal if you push it away if you argue with it it's gonna come back make sense <laughs> my mom's here hey mama we already talked today, of course, on Simon's birthday. Okay, so what other tools? I put more tools in the workbook um, that you can learn and practice to deal and cope with your triggers, with your emotions, with your thoughts. Another one is um, the model which is, um, it's a self-coaching, mm, self-coaching tool, um, 
from Brooke Christier from the Life Coaching School, and she's talking about um, how thoughts create your emotions, create your actions, create your reality, um, and how she's using that, like it's often used in a business sense, and getting what you want, yada, yada, yada. Um, I find that really important. It definitely changed my life, but of course there are limits. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, my experience, uh, I can't think my baby back to life. Okay, um, but there are still thoughts that you can think that influence how you feel after losing a baby. Um, thoughts where you are arguing with your reality where you're thinking about hey this should not be like it um, I should have done something different like a lot of shits 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 where you have your inner mean girl talking to you all the time or one of my other favorite coaches said uh, says like having bullshit of them on um, that is what the model helps with like you learn how to um, which thoughts actually serve you and which don't <sighs> deep breath that was a lot of information how are you doing guys are you still with me you hear me you understand what I'm talking about? I know a lot of those things are like... You hear them and you're like, yeah, no. Can't do that. Won't do that. My thoughts are legit. And they are, yeah, mostly. Some of them are bullshit, though. They don't help you. Um, and, I mean, we're, we're all in this loop, so... Um, it is just a, a process and arguing with reality. I think we all go through this after losing a baby. It's just a natural process. But if you learn how to work with the model, you can shift it a little bit faster. And that will help you heal and grow after losing a baby. Mm. Okay, let me have a look at my other pillars. Which one do I want to talk about next? Yes. Okay, here we go. Um, my big plan for today actually while talking about the pillars was guiding you through a visualization meditation where we go through all the pillars so uh, i will make the other pillars a little bit shorter um, one pillar is um, healing your past you can read about it in the workbook it's a really short paragraph um, healing the past is a lot about forgiveness in my books. Um, I find forgiveness really, really helpful, really, really difficult too. Um, where, especially forgiving myself, but also forgiving others, and a big topic, um, forgiving life for what happened, um, makes it easier to be in the now and to look forward to the future. And um, one important aspect of forgiveness or one important thing to know about forgiveness is that it doesn't mean that what happened was right or is not it doesn't mean that you you said like oh yeah okay um gonna do this again it just means that you're forgiving yourself because you knew you can do better giving others because you know that they didn't do that to hurt you 
And even if they did, you're hurting yourself more by sticking in that anger. And forgiving life, because if you're angry at life, you're going you're gonna to find proof for being angry at life in your daily life too, not just in, in your loss. And it's going to come, like, if you, look, if you look for it, reasons to be angry, you're going to find them. So forgiving life and realizing what I think important is life is not fair, unfortunately, you know, there is, um, it's not necessarily this balance that you did something wrong so you get something back that's bullshit and I think that belief doesn't really help, um, but not thinking that life wants to punish you so, and that, it's, that it is just something that unfortunately happens. And forgiving life, forgiving the universe, forgiving whatever worldview you have, um, allows you to step back into it. Because otherwise, if you're holding this grudge against the actually the one thing that that you that you have, that one life that you live right now, um, well, of course, your daily life is going to be difficult and healing and growth are not going to come easy to you. Um, so we're going to do that in a visualization meditation together. If I'm um, losing you with something, I um, I love people who question what I'm saying. So if you're like thinking, okay, no, nope, lost me here. Even if you don't do it in the comments, maybe send me a message. I'm really, really curious what you're thinking. Where, where is the edge? Where, where are you like, ah, oh, no, this is not working for me. Um, okay, so healing, healing your past um, is another important thing. Uh, pillar, the next pillar is your body, your, um, your energy, your nervous system because after losing a baby like our nervous system often is in fight flight freeze mode we are constantly on the edge because we are expecting something bad to happen again so healing that um, is very important for healing and growth after losing a baby in general and ways you can do it. One way is again emotional freedom technique like we practiced before um, but there are also other tools like breath work that help you to um, to heal your nervous system, to get things flowing again, to get in a mode where your body knows that we are actually safe right now. And um, Another pillar is um, your now, your daily life, um, and way, way how you can heal and grow in that area is focusing on the good and being focusing on gratitude, also changing your habits changing small things. So, um, working with my clients, that looks like um, every session we start with what's going well. So we train our nervous system, our brain I mean, um, to look at the positive things. And that is not toxic um, positivity because I think that's really dangerous when we're like, um, you tell me my baby died and I tell, oh, but look at the bright side. Yeah, no. Um, you don't, it's not bad. It's like you're allowed to feel sad. You're allowed to, to be angry. You're allowed to grieve. And um, there are also beautiful things in your life that I want you to acknowledge, to see, to, to be aware of, to feel they are existing at the same time 
three, twelve, yeah, darkness and light, they're all there. Sometimes you are more on one part and that is okay, but um, allowing yourself to open up to the good things, to what you love, what your strengths are, um, what you love about yourself, what you love about others, what you're grateful for, um, even if it's small things or acknowledging what you did, um, that is so important to healing because that, that focusing or, or seeing those things too actually gives you the strength that you need to grieve, the strength that you need to do the hard work of grieving. Um, because grieving, of course, it has an impact on you, on your nervous system, on your energy. You might have like brain fog after losing a baby, um, and and there are things that you can do to give your body more energy, to support your body, your nervous system in grief. So you can do the grief work. You also look at the other parts that you can nourish. Okay. And your daily life. You have it you now. Okay. So you see that all the six pillars are kind of like interchanging. You can't really say that one part is just part of this or just part of this. They all be come together in in a way to support yourself in healing and growth. And the last part, which is um, another module in my um, coaching program, is identity and future. And um, for me, that was a big one, really, really big, because after losing Simon, after he died, um, I did not know who I am anymore, or who I want to be, or what I want in life. Um, for me personally, um, I knew that I needed to wait for at least a year before I become pregnant again, for my body to heal, um, but I wasn't even sure if I wanted another baby, if I can be, be pregnant again, if I want to be pregnant again, um, and there was a lot of things that I didn't know, I did not have clarity about who I am and what I want, and um, getting clarity on that, having a safe space where you can talk about those things where you're like, well, I'm actually questioning my whole life right now. I have no idea if I want my relationship, I have no idea if I want my job, I have no idea if I need to finish university, I have no idea where I'm going to be in one year, two years, three years, five years, ten years. Um, for me it was a big, 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 big challenge, a big struggle. Because um, I always had this ideal life painted and it just didn't seem right anymore after losing Zimon. So that's why I made that like an important part of healing and growth after losing a baby. Um, but if you're where I was and you're like, I have no idea what I want, so go away with your future and identity. Um, I want to invite you to see yourself, but not in, in the clear way if you don't have that right now, but see yourself healed in the way of your, your future version knows what she wants. Your future version knows how to deal with her emotions, her thoughts, your future versions has healed, your future version has grown and that's what you can focus on, like instead of having the identity like I am a lost mom, 
and breaks my heart if I hear that and I'll forever be sad, I'll forever be like broken and I'll, I'm never gonna heal from this. Um, that's an identity you have if you think that, that it's gonna become true because you think it but it doesn't need to be true so if you allow yourself to shift your identity to I will be happy again I will look forward to my future again even if you're not doing all of that now yeah if you identify yourself with I am someone who will get there that makes a huge difference hmm yes um, <laughs> wow 50 minutes thank you for being here I am so 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 grateful that you are spending this um, really important day with me that you're spending this time with me and um, I want to invite you to a short healing meditation visualization um, where we will use all the six pillars and if you're just um, jumping in right now you can you can stay for that healing meditation you don't need to know anything that we were talking about um, so if you're up for that I want to invite you to find a quiet place, take your phone, take me with you. Um, it would be good if you're sitting so you're not falling asleep, especially if it's late at night when you're in the UK or early in the morning when you're in New Zealand. And so find a comfortable space and know that there is nothing that you can do wrong there is nothing that can go wrong and know that you are able to visualize we all can visualize I always thought that I am not able to um, and or that I'm really really bad at it but um, I had the wrong picture of what it means to visualize so it's just like when you read a book um, and you see the person in there so if I tell you now um, imagine see a woman with a red dress and long blonde hair and the clearer I paint that picture, the clearer you're going to see it in your mind's eye. You can do that even with open eyes. So I just invite you to find a comfortable space. <sighs> Take a few deep breaths. If it feels right for you, if it's comfortable for you, close your eyes. You can roll your shoulders. Stretch your neck, stretch your arms, do everything that is neat that you need to feel comfortable. Everything that every noise that you have in the background that there is here in the background will just allow you to drop deeper into relaxation. So take a few deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Allow yourself to arrive in the here and now. We're starting with the pillar of the now. And I want to invite you to think about three things that 
Ik heb je ook wel echt voor volgen. In je life right now. Can be something really small, something simple. Maybe a delicious tea that you had, that you drank today. Maybe a little bit of sunshine. Maybe that you are warm, that you have food. Maybe a person in your life. So acknowledge the good in the now. Maybe allow yourself even to smile a little bit. <laughs> um, it's a little bit like fake it till you make it. It's sending a message to your brain and your brain sends out dopamine which is the happiness hormone. You're gonna start feeling a little better which like I said before gives you the energy to grieve gives you the energy to mourn your loss <sighs> so that is the now I invite you to see yourself in a beautiful space imagine that you're on a beautiful meadow see the grass around you, feel it under your feet, it's a little bit moist, weird word, a little bit cold, but it is comfortable to step in there. You feel grounded, you feel connected with nature, you can see it and feel it under your feet. You can hear the birds, you can see the forest far away, here a river you can feel the breeze of the wind on your skin and you smell the fresh water the temperature is just right and in this imaginary space you know that you are safe you are feeling extremely connected to yourself. You're feeling loved. And you're going to find a comfortable space to sit down. When you sit down, you notice another presence. There are a few people present in this beautiful space. They sit around you, connecting with you, giving you safety, sending you love. And you know that with you as your older, wiser self, the highest version of yourself, she's there connect with you, keep you safe. And there's this younger version of yourself, version that is in the midst, the deepest, deepest midst of your growth. Maybe it is you from five minutes ago, maybe five months ago. Whatever feels right for you, she's there too. So now connect with those two versions of yourself. You give them a hug, you feel the strength of your older version. And you hug the younger version of yourself. And you can feel the older version telling yourself, I'm here for you on every step of the way. I'm with you. Great timing for the crying baby. If this is triggering you right now, allow yourself to breathe in and out. Focus on something 
gives you safety. Maybe put your hand on your heart. And feel how you calm down, how you feel better. To all the wiser versions looking at yourself. And she tells you, you are so loved. I'm with you every step of your way. I know that this is difficult, but I know that you can heal. I know that you can be happy again. I know because I am. I am you. You are me. Now connect with this younger version of yourself. Give her a really, really, really big, loving hug. You don't need to tell her that things get better. Just tell her that you are, you are there. I'm here with you. I see you. What you're feeling is valid. You are so loved. Feel the love and connection between the three of you. And now you feel another presence. And this presence might not come with a physical body, but you know that it is your baby or your babies. And you can feel the radiating love and you can hear the message your baby, your babies want to pass on to you. Mom, I love you. I'm with you whenever you need me. Whatever you tell yourself that you did wrong, you didn't. Forgive yourself. I'm in a safe space. I'm in a good place now. I'm happy, I'm not in pain. <sighs> and I love you so much. I want you to be happy too, to live your best life. And while feeling this presence, you can imagine that you give your baby a hug, hold them in your arm, Hold them in your heart. Connect with them. Now imagine how those three very important presents, your future, your past, your baby, come bright orbs, get smaller and smaller and smaller, you can integrate them into your heart. You can physically take your hand and put it on your heart, imagining how you are absorbing their love, their energy. So you know you have them always with you. You keep them safe, they keep you safe. You love them and they love you. Mm, beautiful. Now, imagine yourself, you get up in the beautiful space, and you walk towards your future. See yourself in a future where you are healed, where you have healed the parts that feel guilt, shame, anger towards life, parts that are arguing with your now, with your past. Imagine and really step into this version of yourself.
step into this future version of you. She's feeling calm. She's feeling safe. She's feeling strong. And she knows that she's loved by her baby no matter what. Now take a deep breath in and out. Let that feeling of safety and love radiate for your body. Really connect with it. And put your hands on your heart. Set that as an anchor for this beautiful emotion. If you put your hands on your heart, you're going to feel that feeling of safety, belonging, love. Again, you're calm. Now, come back your time to the here and now. Take the time you need. And when you're back, maybe give me a little sign, a smiley, a heart, maybe an emoji that expresses how you feel right now. You can roll your shoulders, stretch a little bit. Okay, let me know when you're back. Beautiful. <sighs> okay. Thank you so much. Guys, I am incredibly grateful that you tried this out. Like, everyone who's still here, amazing, amazing, amazing. How was that for you? <laughs> I feel a little bit exhausted right now, but good. Um, and yeah, that was that was what I had planned for today. I want to tell you in a short note mm. that I'm opening up for group coaching in March. Um, I have prepared a website with all information about that. It's a six months program. I'm going to integrate all the six um, pillars of grief, pillars of growth, pillars of healing. Um, if that sounds like something you might be interested in, have a look. Um, I have a discount too for those of you who watch this, you can use the discount um, code Simon, Simon, S-I-M-O-N. That means um, you can join us for 555, five, five, um, in total, um, which is, I think, a fair price for, for six months. You get two calls per week small group yeah I, I am I'm not someone to to push you into something that you think you don't need so um, send me a message if you have a question about that but you can find the infos about it at um, www.griefandgrow.space um, and then if you click on Gaga Lab, which is the name, Grief and Grove After Losing a Baby, um, and the acronym is Gaga, which I find really matching because I think we're all a little bit Gaga after losing a baby. I certainly felt like that. Um, and so we're going to be the Gaga Lab team. We're all on the same, 
on the same journey, um, seeing life through a completely different lens. And um, yeah, I would love to see you in there. Um, if you are struggling um, financially with anything, reach out to me um, to see if you can find a solution for that. I'm thinking about some um, form of, of, I don't know, sponsorship um, or something similar. If um, if that is an issue for you, um, because I think it is so important to have community. So, um, yeah. Kimmy, um, yeah, I, well, I want to just say thank you so, so much for being here. Um, I am grateful I could spend some time with you on Zenon's sixth birthday. Um, I, I hope this gave you some healing, um, some sort of benefit today in honor of Simon. Um, send me a message if you're coming in right now. Um, we're just finishing up, um, but there will be a replay. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just um, grateful. Thanks, guys. Okay, still on Facebook, so I'm leaving now.